If you stick around and you listen to my logic behind learning to shoot on manual exposure settings, it may change your photography life. I'll promise you that if you learn how to shoot on manual settings and become familiar with it, it's going to make everything in your photographic future more easy. When you get into flash photography, it's going to make things so much easier. When you get into night photography or sport photography or anything that relies on particular camera settings, it's going to make your life so much more easy. Okay, so another video of an old man telling you that you should be shooting on manual settings. That's exactly what a lot of people will think. And, and it's probably valid, a valid reason to switch this video off. But if you stick around and you listen to my logic behind learning to shoot on manual exposure settings, it may change your photography life. Now the reason is that you'll know the logic behind using these settings. You'll know the logic behind setting a faster or slower shutter speed. You'll know the logic behind a larger or smaller aperture. It's going to make a huge difference. Now I'm going to get in and explain it the way that I do in my photography courses so that it's nice and logical for you to understand. That sounds very patronizing, doesn't it? But anyway, bear with me. So there are three ways that we can control how bright our picture is. One is our aperture, one is our shutter speed, and one is our ISO, okay? Now I'm not gonna get into the intricacies of ISO and if it affects exposure or not. Um, you can have a look at that in another video that we've done. But those three things are the things that will make a difference to how bright your picture is. They also have secondary considerations. The ISO has a secondary consideration of noise. The higher your ISO goes, the more noise you get in your photograph, which really doesn't bother me in the slightest, but a lot of photographers obsess about getting low noise images. Cameras are so good nowadays that high ISO is, is not a major issue. With shutter speed, our secondary consideration is freezing motion or showing motion. So a faster shutter speed is going to freeze our movement in the image and a slower shutter speed is going to blur our image. The motion in our image is created by how long that shutter is open for. With our aperture, the secondary consideration is our depth of field. So a larger aperture is going to minimize our depth of field, which means that our foreground and our background are going to be out of focus. A smaller aperture is going to increase that depth of field and make our background sharper and our foreground sharper. So these are the three secondary considerations that we have with these three particular elements of our exposure. Exposure is the main reason why I change elements, but the secondary considerations do matter. Now, if you understand about your shutter speed, how your shutter works, then when you switch to flash, you'll know that you can keep your shutter speed at a particular setting so that your flash is going to synchronize with it. If you're using auto settings, your shutter could creep up above your synchronization speed and that could be a disaster for you. If you're shooting sport, your shutter speed generally needs to be reasonably high if you're shooting fast action sport, which means that your aperture on auto exposure will probably compensate by increasing the size of your aperture or increasing your ISO to give you a better exposure. And those things are out of control. In most situations, you're a little bit out of control when you're using any of your auto settings, be it full auto, program, or any of your shutter or aperture priority options. So that's why I love to shoot on manual settings because I'm in total control of the situation. I'm in total control of the results of my picture. You can see in this image how the depth of field is very shallow. So we've got a blurry background and we've got a blurry foreground. Whereas in this image here, the depth of field is greater. The first one, I used a large aperture, for example, F4. The second one, I used a smaller aperture, such as F16 or F22. Don't be afraid of using those extremes of aperture. Even though photographers will tell you that F8 or F11 or 5.6 is going to give you the best, crispest, sharpest quality image, moving up and down those aperture scales is still going to be fine. The quality of your image won't be degraded by very much, very minimal amount, but there's so many other things that are going to benefit you by using that whole scale of apertures. A lot of photographers shoot exclusively on large apertures. They'll have a, a 1.8 or 1.4 or 2.8 lens and they shoot everything at the same aperture. 
To me, that's restricting yourself. If your photograph needs some context in the background, um, then you choose a great background to shoot against. If you want to shoot in a car park with cars and people and shopping trolleys in the background, sure, throw that out of focus and it's going to concentrate attention on your subject. But you're going to end up with a whole range of images that will look exactly the same, just a different person. So choose your locations. Go to locations that are spectacular, that is going to enhance your subject in the image. Um, now I'm talking mostly about people, but with landscapes as well. You can include that background, the foreground, the midground, so that that gives you a bigger story and a, and a nicer composition, a better composition for people to look at and to explore when they look at your photograph. When we're using shutter speed, you could use a very fast shutter speed such as here, um, particularly when we're using flash because the flash tends to be the shutter speed when it fires at a thousandth of a second or more. Or you could shoot with a slower shutter speed to get movement in your image. You can create an image that is a composite of both. You can shoot with flash and then leave your shutter open to give you more movement in that subject. The possibilities are endless when you understand how to shoot on manual settings because you can be creative with all of this sort of stuff. Have a look at some of our other videos that will explain these particular elements, your shutter speed, your aperture and your ISO and give it a go. Just try shooting on manual settings. It takes a little bit of practice, as I said, but you won't be sorry. The results that you get after a while will be so much better than you would have gotten shooting on auto settings. You might find that the standard of your work goes down a little bit, um, particularly your exposure, while you're learning these three elements and how to shoot on manual settings. But after a while, when you get it, the quality of your work is going to skyrocket because you're in total control of what's going on. So please give it a go. Um, believe me or don't believe me, it's up to you, but I'll see you in the next video.